I think both the, the other co-director, Sani, um, who's a, a clinical psychologist, both of us are very keen to make sure that the perspectives of people with eating disorders are, um, are, are kind of informing and shaping what we do. And we've got a, um, a peer co-director who has experience of an eating disorder. And we have, um, we have kind of public engagement events where, um, where we ask people to kind of like comment on what they think we should be doing, what priorities there are for them in terms of research or service development and those sorts of those sorts of things so it's a, I guess about um, reshaping the place of people with lived experience in research and services because I think in in eating disorders research a lot of and and treatment a lot of the time people with eating disorders have been kind of their views have been often dismissed as it's the eating disorder talking so mm. unless you're just fully compliant with what you're told you ought to be doing then then it th there isn't a lot of um space or there hasn't historically been a lot of space i mean that said i've noticed that eating disorders conferences there is a there is also beginning to be a wider real shift in problematizing that kind of marginalization of eating disorder voices um, and the for instance have um, eating disorders ambassadors who are people with lived experience um, so it's a kind of it's it's happening more broadly as well um, I guess the other ways in which being a feminist kind of impacts on on what we do is obviously promoting qualitative research and kind of so getting those people's voices through mm -hmm. um, qualitative research um, and a, a less pathologizing perspective for our research, of course, too. Um, and, and being very aware of the kind of equality and diversity aspect of, um, of service provision. Um, so, <laughs> so part of the work that I'm doing at the moment, um, which has been looking at, as I said, people's experiences of seeking help. Um, and it's, it's involved interviews with carers, as well as people with lived experience and with GPs. And there's clearly quite a, um, a stereotype or set of stereotypes really about, obviously about young women, um, but also about who has an eating disorder and what does an eating disorder look like? Mm -hmm. um, and although young women, um, white young women who are thin have trouble accessing services and being taken seriously, it's kind of being very aware that, um, that it's potentially even a worse situation for those people that don't fit that stereotype. Um, that kind of, you know, locally, we don't even have at the moment binge eating disorder services. Mm. Um, and that's something that's changing now um, that um, with the, the steering group is is putting those those services into place. But given how common binge eating disorder is um, and those kinds of experiences that you might call in that direction, mm -hmm. it's it's telling, obviously, that um, the services haven't existed till now.